All right, friends, and welcome back to our podcast, uh, The Audacity, where, of course, we talk about things that are sewing related, a little pop culture, and we'll start to mix in interviews very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. As always, we are ready to kick off and we're ready to be messy with the Am I the Asshole? So, right, am- let's get it. Yes, let us. Um, and I got to be honest, I feel like everybody's an asshole today. Your girl is tired, but whatever. That's Am hard. I the asshole for telling my sister-in-law I won't sew clothes for her because I don't know how to sew for her body type? I started sewing in college and have a wonderful full, wonderful wardrobe full of me made clothes. I'm really proud of it. There's a huge point that is going to make me come across wrong. I have the quote unquote ideal body for sewing. In terms that other sewists might get, I'm apparently the person whose body matches the sloper used for drafting patterns in the mainstream pattern companies. I can sew a size eight for tops and bottoms. So this means that aside from slight, very slightly adjusting the hem length or straps of a garment, I do not have to make any adjustments from the pattern. No length and short and scooping arm size. FBA, SBA, et cetera. I never learned how to make the adjustments. I don't need to. I literally only sew clothing for myself and nothing has ever not fit me perfectly. I really, really love my sister-in-law. She's supportive and sweet and friendly. She welcomed me into the family with open arms and she's always been supportive. About three months ago, she asked me to sew her something that she would pay for. I kind of put off telling her no. My sister-in-law is fairly chubby. She has a beautiful body that she's proud of, but I know without even measuring her that because of her weight distribution, she has a fairly large chest and a bigger belly, but smaller hips and not much booty. She slumps forward and has a very arched lower back. I don't have the skills to sew for her. I tried to learn a little bit, but was overwhelmed because of all of the math. Two weeks ago, she finally sat me down to go through my patterns with her. I had to be honest and I told her word for word, I can't sew for you because I don't know how to sew for your body type. She got very red and started asking me what that meant, what exactly her body type, did I think I was better than her or something, and it turned into a big argument. She accused me of fat shaming her and mocking her with talk about body types and stuff. And that idea of flattering clothes is based on trying to make fat women look smaller and I'm pushing beauty standards on her. I ended up crying and kicking her out of the house and she took it to the the court of public opinion, Facebook, where her friends bashed me. My mother-in-law got involved and told me how that she was ashamed of my judgmental behavior and that she expected better of me and told me that I should probably just not come to family Christmas because sister-in-law is depressed now. My husband is on my side, but keeps imploring me to smooth things over. I don't get how I'm even supposed to do that. Am I the asshole? Um, You are, in my opinion. Let me tell you why. So all those you gave a whole bunch of excuses as to why um, you put it in that because you just fit into um, you just fit into the sloper, which means that you fit into a standardized standardized shape that was created in 1941 on white women. Whoop de do basically means you don't have anybody. So do you want some cake? I don't know what to tell you, but a seam is a seam. And w- there are so many different options out here today. That's a cop out. It that is. is a cop out, and j- it just you could just say that I don't feel comfortable or I don't want to. Yeah, just say because you don't. That's the truth of it. Just say you don't want to. I like to sew for myself, and that's fine. All this extra, and and again with the many Palmer and Pletch books, with all the different things that are out on the market, oh, with excuses all the are nothing but tools of incompetence. Yeah, used to build Ooh. arguments. Say, of say it one more time. Say it one more time for the people, Julian. Excuses, excuses. are. Excuses. Are tools of incompetence. Are tools to build, of incompetence. Build okay. monuments of nothing. It's of a good nothing. word. It's a good word he just said. And if if you know, you know if you know where that came from. Because and most 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 black Greeks understand that. So, but that's all we're gonna say. But I mean, literally, just say no. Yeah. Yeah. You could have saved yourself heartache. You could have saved the family heartache. You could have saved her heartache just by saying, I like to sew for myself. I will yeah. teach you how to do it. Yeah. Mm. Let's learn together. Yes. Simple. And this if at that point in time, she's like, no, I don't want to learn. Well, sis, I don't know what to tell you. Besides no. Besides no. So here's my issue. 
people voted her not the asshole. And I agree with you, Julian, that she is, in fact, the asshole. I think that there's, of course, because what, in the year of 2023, I'm now finally branching out and really sewing for other people and everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. I think that it's fine for people to decide that they would like to keep their sewing gifts to themselves. Like the whole notion of selfish sewing, I feel like is bananas. Because let me tell you something, if it's my skill set, is it selfish? Like who's who is it to who is it that that is really like no you actually have to share your skill set with everyone and you have to be selfless with it. Like what? I think that's crazy. I also think that uh she should have just said, yeah, just like what she said like no, I don't I don't sew for other people. The amount of people that I've said that to over the years, I just don't sew for other people. I sew for myself. And when they're like, why? I sew for myself because I know what my body type is. I don't sew for other people because it's too hard for me to make sure that things fit on your body the same way that I'm able to make sure things that fit on mine, you know? Um, I feel like, in fact, like we were going, and we'll get into this in a second, but we were going through, you know, uh, unpopular opinions with sewing and stuff like that. And there was a comment that stood out to me on this Reddit thread. And it's like, oh, people think that because we're in the sewing community, we have to be nice and blah, 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 blah. And my thing is, is why wouldn't, why wouldn't we want to be nice? You know what I mean? Because people are miserable and need to have some. And it's, you know what the sum is, but we keep you, it. Right. Listen, I can't ever think of a mean thought that I had after having some. An attitude adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yes. A tune up. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people need an attitude adjustment because clearly yes. and and note attitude adjustments are genderless. Whatever you need, whatever works for you, works for you. But it should not. The way that people feed their endorphins, feed their dopamine by just being mm -hmm. mean, it's just sad. And it's doing nothing but deteriorating our society because it don't take it. It don't take that. You can you can get the same dopamine by being nice to somebody. Do you understand? I love paying people compliments. I love to say how. Like being excited and celebrating people, it yeah. makes me so happy. Like it literally, does. it makes my day to see somebody else win. Oh, yeah. Period. So all of this, like, yes, you don't have to be nice, but you also don't have to be a bitch in the process. Yeah. I just, I feel like, and look, I get it because I think that we all have our petty moments, right? But I really feel like, people in the crafting community are some of the most miserable that I've ever encountered. And it's bananas to me because crafting makes me feel so happy, right? Creating makes me feel so happy. And I get that it might just be a me thing and it's not for everyone, but I do feel like I have never seen people be as mean outside of racist as I do in the crafting community. And I don't understand why for the life of me. Um, like, there were so many different ways to simply say no and pursue and like leave it at no. And even if she couldn't, if she was still asking her, the sister in law still asking her, like, it's okay to be like, I said no. Like, I said what I said. And it's okay to, and it's okay to do that. You could have just said no. No. So, and I think, but, but because you did not understand how to advocate for yourself. And just right. say and know your boundaries and say your boundaries as they are mm -hmm. and not make up an excuse to then blame and victim blame somebody else in the process. Hence why you are the asshole. So it's yes. not because you didn't do the action it's because of how you handled no. it. Exactly. Be an adult and just say how you felt about it. Say exactly. it with your chest. Say, say it with your chest your that chest. fits into a regular standard block. How about say that? Say it in your perfect body chest, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that it, it kind of further drilled in that um that she was the asshole because she's talking about how perfect or ideal her body is for sewing um but there is an edit or an update and it says thanks for the judgments everyone i didn't go into more detail into our person into our in-person argument because of the word limit but i did try explaining things to her i'll send her a video with an example of how hard it is to do the pattern adjustments to see if she understands what i'm saying I appreciate the suggestions. I won't be sewing anything for her or anyone else, but maybe it'll inspire her to learn to sew. Also for those ha those harping on how I'm not a good sewist, not a good seamstress, that's the entire point of this post. I'm not a seamstress. I have a hobby. 
For those who keep saying, just get a plus size pattern, they make those you know. You are missing my point. The point is not her dress size. Just getting a plus size pattern wouldn't have resulted in a garment that fit her at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It would have got you close. It could have got... So ca and cashmere has different patterns that are designed for different proportions, right? Cashmere does. I think Jolly has some. Like there are so many different options outside of the ones you can buy at Joann's. Yeah. But I feel like the part that, that pisses that. me off the most is reading reading this and she's like, oh, I love my sister-in-law so much. You know, we really get along. I really, really like her blah, 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 yackety, smackety, I'm full of shit, right? Because here's the thing, Julian, I, Julian, I really, really like you. I love you so much. If you were to say, hey, Veronica, in fact, here's the thing, you have to say it because when you came out with your pant pattern, I was like, I love you so much. I'm going to make this pant pattern. Why? Because as a fellow designer, I know what makes patterns sell. It's other people sewing said pattern. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do? Yes. I'm going to make your pattern for my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have these pants that are sitting on my, my sewing machine and I'm going to get him to model them. And then I'm going to post it. I'm going to tag the pattern. Why? Because I really, really like you. And then most importantly, I'm going to make sure that people know that they need to go ahead and recreate this. And most importantly, that even if you only sew for women's bodies, Sewing this pattern is not hard and it will teach you something new. Absolutely. Or Same even thing with that jacket pattern this weekend that you were like, oh, it's not that hard. And I was like, bitch, forget that. And then I sewed it and I was like, okay, okay, okay. We can do it. We can do it. We can right. do it. Right. Again, it's now my jacket because we decided that it was a little too young on Denver, but he's about to get another jacket made. And as I make the jacket, I will likely go live again. Because you know why? I really, really, really like you. And I want to make sure you are successful. So I'm going to do what I need to do in order to do my part in that. When you really, really like or love or respect people, you want to do what you can to contribute to their happiness. Mm -hmm. as, opposed to as opposed to causing the misery. You know what I'm saying? Right. And what's interesting... And, and even freesewing.org, you could have put her measurements in. Put her measurements in and, and the pattern be drafted for you. La Cala, same, diff same thing. Bootstrap fashions, same thing. There are so many different options that you could have chose. Yeah. Instead of going this route mm -hmm. um, and sending her something saying like, I'm going to have to do all of this, still ain't doing it, it ain't cutting it. Just say you didn't want to. Right. Because clearly that's it. Because when you talk about loving someone, loving someone means that you're willing to put in work. Now, what you could have also said, like, okay, this will be a little different for me. I'm not going to get this done in a week. Mm -mm. It's or, gonna take hey, a can time. I actually have you come over so that I can sew this while you're here? Right. And we can, like, make a night of it? Right. Right. There were a lot of ways to get out of it. And that's not to say that everyone has to sew for other people. That's not what we're saying at all. Because we, we both that, sew, but I you sew for others. I don't. Well, and you know, that's fresh for me. Fresh. And, and, and it will never be on my plate. It will never be in my refrigerator. It will never be in my produce. That will never be a fresh nothing for me. The devil yeah. is a liar. I mean... I, I will say there's some limits for me as well, but I'm just like, it's, I feel like so many, so, so often people look for reasons not to do it and just be like, ah, oh, it's just not, it's just not within my skill set. Like most sewists started out as hobby sewist. Yes. And most and of us have those Gordon Gartrell moments, but people still Gordon love Gordon Gartrell. So, you know, but again, if you don't have the emotional intelligence in interpersonal skills to have the to communicate how this could have went correctly to say that or yeah. just just own that so exactly. it's so and but placing again is the victim blaming in this process like you're yeah. talking about because of the way because of her body shape when her body is shaped the way it needs to be shaped clearly she's able to pull somebody i'm just saying
men are men have been known actually both men and women have been known to be breast people and i'm chubby too <laughs> i've never had a problem pulling look, you know what i'm saying look cushion for what cushion. for what let Amen. me tell you something and this is not to shade on the skinny men out there but let me tell you who's never bruised in between my legs my husband or a thick man so it goes both ways look look it's cuffing season it's about to start getting chilly mm -hmm. go ahead and get you a thicky thick one to help keep you warm okay that's all i'm gonna say look get you a little a teddy bear or something to keep you warm at night okay mm -hmm. all right so we have rebuked reddit's uh vote as far as her not being the asshole we have voted her the asshole that's it uh, the audacity has spoken, and she certainly has some audacity to be talking to her sister-in-law that way. Clearly, clearly, yeah. yeah. Sis, she can't come to Christmas dinner. No, you you can go sit down with your raisins and your potato salad somewhere. With your raisins, because you know she probably put raisins in her potato salad. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it read that way Raisin to me. As apples, well. you know, maybe yeah. All of the things. Not in the potato salad. Not I in the saw it in Better Homes and Gardens. It looks so yeah. festive. And you know, Better Homes and Gardens really do be having that stuff up in there. <laughs> playing in your face. Just playing in your Ooh, face. Julian. And y'all do it. Y'all buy into it. Oh, Jesus. My pressure. We ain't about to get my pressure. I see Julian. Julian was like, my oh, it took me back. Not you having PTSD. Quickly. Quickly. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? It all started in middle school. Mm -mm. But we, ain't, mm -mm, we ain't doing that today. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So Julian is like big time, right? Y'all. I'm just like, can somebody just teach me how to be like Julian? This is all I'm just trying to figure out in my life, right? So Julian has, um, not only does he have one challenge with BSN for sewing his jacket, but now he's got the Sew Your View challenge as well sewing his jacket right and so the other day the other evening both ella from handmade millennial as well as julian were uh on a face or excuse me an interview i'm sorry take yeah. two in an in, in instagram live pardon me wrong <laughs> wrong platform an instagram live with the one and only monica that's so monica who actually runs so your view now, um, one of the things that they discussed, of course, was unpopular opinions. We, too, are going to discuss some unpopular opinions, except our shit is not going to get messy like it did on that Love to Sew podcast uh, Instagram post, right? Because we're going to keep it cute, as we always do. So, Julian. Mm-hmm. I know it's your unpopular opinion that Julian is actually, like, the goal of many. So... I need for you to get that out of your head. I'm just trying to be like you. I'm just trying to have like, I don't know, someone do a, ch a challenge with my pattern as well. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be like Julian when I grow up is, is it, you know what girl, I'm saying? Girl, hush. Any hoodles. I would tell you, so let me, let me, let me preface it. So people are talking about, so you normally we share our fabrics and stuff that we get them from. Um, my unpopular opinion is, is that um, I don't mind. I don't gatekeep my fabric. I don't do that. I don't do that. Um, but I don't want people to copy me. I don't want people to wear the same things I have on most days. Um, so sometimes when you see things on pattern envelopes or even things that I post, I have bought all the fabric so that it don't no get by it. This whole set, I bought all the fabric because y'all not twinning with me. Or um, I hold it and let it vintage for a little bit. So like the green coat, from my uh, uh, Know Me 2059, um, that fabric is fabric I purchased in like 2020. Mm. And it was from a fabric subscription box that sold out and was specifically, one one was kind of opened up so that I can buy it. Um, no, no hate. <laughs> um... So yeah, so some of the fabrics and I'm like, especially on Etsy, if there's a lot, if they they said there's like four yards left, I know my project might 
only need two. I'm and buying. It. I'm buying it all. And especially if somebody said, "Oh, this is in somebody else's cart." Mm-mm. I'm sniping it and getting it out and buying it quickly. Buy it now. Yes. Play with play play with Jesus. Try Jesus. Don't try Julian. Don't do it. You know, it's funny because I, I agree with that. Like I've really tried to go back to like ready to wear clothing. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why I simply cannot is because I never want someone to be like, oh my God, I have that too. No. Right. The dead silence for a reason, because we are not twinning. We are not tripling. No. I don't ever want to go to a function and be and arrive in the same outfit as someone. No. Oh no. No, no, no. No. I would be so embarrassed. Granted, we'll be it would embarrassed, sound completely like, different. Right. But, um, but it would be a no for me. Yes. So I agree with this. I agree with that. Um, my unpopular opinion is I will not grade up if the grade if the pattern lines are not already there. And I'm okay with that. That makes sense to me. Um, and like I've watched uh, like Carmen and LaShawn like grade my patterns to be down to their size and I thought that for a really long time I thought that it was kind of jacked up but something that Carmen said was so freeing to me and she was like plus size people have to do this all the time so standard size people we can do it and I was like I felt so seen in that moment because we have had to do it all the time absolutely so and as as we were talking on here, I was thinking like, hmm, I could do your bustier without the cups and make it into like a under like an under chest moment, and put it on with your uh, vintage shirt, right? Or just any shirt in my high waisted pants. Oh, that would be so fire, Julian! Please make it. We 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 got thoughts. We got thoughts, y'all. We got thoughts. We, we think have of- thoughts. Um, but yeah, it's. It should not be, this should not be a problem. And I think, I don't know that this is going to sound unpopular and kind of elitist, but it's not. Take it as, take it as it is. Sadly, as generations have come and gone and stuff like that, the sewing industry, the knowledge has been lost. And yeah. in many ways, the learning has been dumbed down. So people do not have the knowledge the way that people previously had to just, it was, it was common knowledge just to do it. It yep. wasn't that big of a deal because we knew things weren't going to fit. We knew that we weren't those model sizes. We know that the blocks being used is from, hasn't really been updated since the 60s, 60s, right. 70s. Um, even though if you actually look at uh, historical patterns, especially especially the men's blocks, um, they used them more back then because they had big and tall patterns mm. um, and like height patterns for tall men that they do not have anymore. But any hoodles. Another conversation for another day. A little mm-hmm, bit. Of mm-hmm. Um, but literally the library is free. You you can learn all of this. Palmer Pletch is yeah. there. All yeah. the books are there. Design the is, I think it's there. called dress design from the 40s. Is there like literally, and I think even and and because I hear this a lot, people are scared to hack or like flip and reverse our patterns please do yeah please like i said on sunday i think that the one of the greatest compliments to pattern designers is when people uh hack our patterns and take what when an idea that we had and they say "Mm, i see your idea and i'm going to use this as a great starting point and now i'm going to infuse myself into this pattern and i'm going to make it my way absolutely Absolutely. That's like, yeah. I love when that happens. Me it too. makes me so happy. Yeah, like that bomber jacket. Fantastic. Yes. Carmen. Fantastic. Now, no, the bomber jacket idea, that is Carmen's idea mm-hmm. that we are now just working on trying to perfect. And there are so many different ways that you can do it. Because exactly. we most of us did it with like knit bands, but you literally could do go very, very vintage and do it with a almost like a jean jacket waistband with little tabs on the back to cinch in that way. Ooh. There are so many different ways that you can do these jackets. Julian. Look, I don't thought about it. I was because I was literally like since seeing it, I'm like, I've been working in my head how I can make this happen. 
other mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. But we love that, like, use it as a basis. I think that, and and I see this also in my class. So a lot of times, if you take a sewing class, you make a project as described. You know what I'm saying? So like, literally, they tell you, cut this fabric, cut these things of this fabric or something like that. In my classes, normally, I do not do that. Mm. I tell you what fabrics to bring. You will have enough to make whatever you want with it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not asking you to order. You're not buying, bringing extra or anything like that, but you will have enough to have fun. Because I think part of the issue is, is that as a culture, we are no longer fully utilizing the full aspects of our brain. We are not tapping into those creative, those creative centers. Um, mm-hmm. We are going into a place of monotony and churning out something that we have seen and yeah. not using our own in, like instilling our own flavor, our own flair into things. And maybe that's a cultural thing because most as people of color, most of the time, that's just innate in our culture to do that. Right. Of uh, People of in, indigenous um, backgrounds and stuff like that, it's just innate for us, the colors, the designs, the patterns, the prints. We might use something as a basis, but then we got to instill our own things that are, that are flowing from our own ancestors, from our own feelings, from our own spirits into things. Um, but most of the time in a class, you are not seeing that because most of the time mm-hmm. I'll be hundred percent honest and maybe I'm just feeling spicy today. Call me Tabasco. Uh Oh, is Cordell here? Juju. We, Juju is here. Juju's here. We skipped but over Cordell. Clearly, clearly, oh. clearly. Um, but we, the people who are teaching it don't look like us. Yeah. But also most of the people in the class don't look like us either. So when I teach a class, I make people practice their creativity. Mm-hmm. I do not tell them what to do. Like, oh, that would look cute there. You could also do this. What you want to do? Yeah. Literally. And it's it's interesting because you literally see a childlike innocence start to, to rise up that mm-hmm. probably they have not experienced for a long time as they are now designing things for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that... Because, and and I will say the same thing about the like HGTV and why I had to stop watching it. Because remember, HGTV used to have great shows. You used to have um, awesome interiors. Um, you used to have design on a dime. You used to like- Oh, yes. That was my favorite. Look, and, and we can't forget Room by Room with Sherry and Ted. Was it Ted and Sherry? Somebody. But I remember some of those little shows and stuff like that. Uh, Candace Olsen, her first few shows. And then if you're really old and remember TLC, you have the Christopher Lowell show. Um, I'm taking it back. If if in the if, Send a comment if you remember the Christopher Lowell show. Um, but people were able to use creativity. This was all before the time that everything was Love It and Listed or the games. And this whole idea of urban, well, not even urban, but rustic cabin, urban farm, kind of a, a Swiss coffee and, and um, tricorn black. And and I, and I that's sad. I know the colors like that. And those are all like Benjamin Moore colors. Check it. Tricorn black is a color. Um, but everything looks the same. Everybody wants the same aesthetic. Mm-hmm, it's very, mm-hmm. it, it's giving very much pumpkin spice. It's oh. giving very much, it's giving very much Taylor Swift. Oh, goodness. And that's not my ministry. But dang, not calling Taylor Swift pumpkin spice. Did I lie? If I lied, tell me. Oh my I goodness. said to be corrected. And no, hush, fellow of Jerusalem. I'm a hush. But it did. It did. Um, yeah. Here's another one that I think that both Julian and I subscribe to because we talked about this before we started recording. Or actually, we were still recording, but obviously it's going to be cut out. But um, the whole notion that um, copying someone is the biggest form of flattery, I feel like it is not. And I feel like it is the biggest sign of laziness. Um And I feel like being inspired by someone, yes, is good. I love that. But being inspired should give you that that ground, that launch pad to get into your own 
ideas and to get into your own possibilities, to get into your own, wow, this could be great if, insert whatever mm-hmm. it is that you'd like to do. Um, I do not believe that um, copying is the greatest form of flattery. I feel like it is the opposite. I feel like it's, you know, I don't know. No, I think I think we are we are definitely on that same page. I think it's, we are not, tr- I don't want the sewing industry that is, especially for home sewists and like just creatives in general. We not trying, I don't, I'm not trying to be straight off the runway, straight off of somebody else's runway where somebody else dis- dictated what I wear for my season. I can get inspiration from it, but I need it to, be instilled and filled with me i need i like i when i'm on the street it is me who is walking in this cold cruel world of people who are me and don't know how to talk to people it's me having to as a black man as a black queer man having to go into boardrooms having to go into community centers having to go into spaces that are not always um friendly or warm or welcoming to me Mm -hmm. i don't need i I can't bring anybody else's personality and anybody Mm -hmm. else's armor into the space i have to bring my own so and so part of my clothing and let's go spiritual for a second but that's part of my mantle like that's i carry that with me it carries my own it's part of who i am and part of my essence um and people when i'm not looking because people will ask if i'm not looking my bright colorful self they're like what's going on because yeah. it, it's so that is not clearly something's off if I'm not coming in as myself. Um, yeah, if your glasses so, don't match your outfit, we know something's wrong. <laughs> Chow, we're going to talk about that. Tell tell me why I was cleaning off my dining room table and found a pair of glasses that I forgot I own. I'm not going to judge. They have been there for six months. And I tried them on because I thought they were a pair of dummy glasses. Just, you know, sometimes you got a pair of dummy glasses. I tried to like, wait a minute. Why can't I see through these? He said, and the Lord said, let there be light. And I could see. And could. And could. And warm today. And not only were they just glasses. <laughs> and they were warm today. <laughs> were transitioned. So they had sunglasses in them too. And I'm like, so I'm outside. And then I step in the car and I'm like, why are my lenses dark? I'm like, all these transitions. And totally forgot. Look at you being more prepared than you anticipated. And I say this as I ordered four new pairs of glasses yesterday. Um, Again, not here to judge. Because here's the thing. My truth is, is that contacts just are not doing it for me anymore. Because glasses are the best. Because we're blind and cute. Yes. And they are an accessory at they all are. times. At all times. So, and if y'all judging me, y'all can judge your mama. Oh, she said, he saying. said, judge your mammy and them. Mm-mm. really can really can no, and tell her i said hey as you do it so i love and, sweet tea and a piece of sweet potato pie and give her the link to where she can get some cute glasses from too right we got resources we aren't gatekeepers but but you ain't gotta buy the same ones i got thank you no Mm-mm. nope <laughs> nope here's you know and this is a sore point for us i'm gonna bring this one up too I don't think that looking like your garments are handmade is a bad thing. No. No. Like, I feel like people use that as an insult. And I feel like it is a compliment. Like, thanks. But here's here's the thing. Our garments never... People are trying to measure up to ready to wear when I'm trying to measure up to couture. That part. So... If you look at, especially historic couture, they are always interesting to look in. Um, the insides and stuff like that, when I tell you they are a mess, a mess. Mm. All of the whip stitch, like, because no, nothing is finished. There's no surging. Mm-mm. It's whip stitch in place and stuff like that. You have many different layers and stuff like that. Now, I will say this. Sometimes the difference between looking... Because there's a difference between looking handmade and homely. Mm. Know, your, know your terms. Because sometimes, know your difference. Yeah. just because you made it at home, but you decided not to iron it, you don't look handmade, you look homely. Mm-hmm. You look messy. You look, and this messy. is coming from someone who is an anti-ironer. 
sometimes sometimes you gotta put i just don't i don't ever show me me ironing <laughs> i iron though let me just go on record and say i do iron you i hate every know. second of the ironing you do you do like on sunday as we were doing our sew along, I was like, yo, I'm so fucking mad that I'm over here ironing. I feel like I don't even have a right. In fact, as I was live sewing on Tuesday morning, I was over here like, I don't even feel like I have the right setup for the sew- for the ironing. And Dijanae was like, oh, you need an overhead. I said, no, I just, I need somebody else to do it. Pick, pick somebody else to do it. I'm the wrong person. I'm, it's me. I'm the problem. I'm just going to smile. I'm just going to smile, but I, I bet I love that you iron it. I, it but I see the benefit, but you know, and I think yeah. that everyone sees the benefit, right? Especially because I have recently had fallen in love with, of course, interfacing. Um, There was a point in time where I would see interfacing called for a pattern and I would be like, mm, hard pass. It's not for me. However, interfacing and I have become BFFs to the point where my love of interfacing came in handy for like saving the day for this costume project that I'm working on. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm, whatever brings you to the light of ironing. That's all that Not matters. whatever brings you to the light. That's, <laughs> that's all that the, matters. To the bright side. I mean, look, like whatever brings you to and works you through. It's all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But so, but that, that is the thing, but, I understand that I don't mind if my like I want I don't want it to look like it came straight out the store, because understand that a, a person didn't make it at the store; it was computer most of the time. Or, and if you look on YouTube, I because I love sewing videos, and if you look at some of these um, cut and sewn garment factories and stuff like that, they got templates and different machines for each each single piece. I I have a lot of machines, but each one is usually not a single a single task machine. Um, so I'm cool with what I got and I'm cool with what I do because I know what I'm capable of. I need you yeah. to be know what you're capable of and just and operate and stand in it. Yeah. And then just press it. And even let's say that you don't feel like pressing it, send it to the cleaners. Do you understand that can, and send it to the cleaners, not even to, to clean, just to press. Please press this for me. Thank you. Just press it. Because especially hot, like um, the heat of it will get it yeah. together. Or do like me and marry someone who likes pressing. Look, look, will come in handy. Amen. Come in handy. It'll come in handy. It'll come in handy. So Julian, I have a question for you. Uh-huh. What are you working on? Child, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so still finishing up my pattern test stuff um, because, you know, it got away from me. So we're doing that. Um, actually, before this, I was finishing up the jacket from uh, TikTok on Sunday. Mm-hmm, so making mm-hmm. sure that I'm just doing like some final pressing and stuff like that before I start on my buttonholes and buttons on the jacket um, and the pants that match it. So I was doing all my finishing there. You made like a whole other suit. Uh, it was, you know, it was a cute little outfit that I could wear. A little situation. A little, you know, a little two-piece, a little two-piece. Um, yeah, so do I still know what I'm wearing for my birthday on the 27th? No. Do I know what I'm wearing for Thanksgiving? No, but I have some fabrics. Some. Knit. I mean, you got like 20 days, so. But you know how I do. I know. So I should I should get to it, but have I also bought some patterns that might be coming tomorrow? I did, so. That's perfect because it's just in time for new pattern November. That is true. That is true. That is true. And I still that need to do true. a pattern. Well, I mean, the pattern tests are new. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but, um, and I finally started like cutting out that and start seeing what, um, what alterations I need to make for my body, uh, which is good. But do yeah. you alter the pattern piece or do you alter the garment? I'm going to be all, well, I, there are some, I have to add length. So I'm going mm-hmm. to the pattern piece first. Okay. Before to the garment and leaving like we're going to baste it together first to see what other things need to happen but we there are some basic things that I need to do on the pattern I have the ideal body type for sewing too because I don't have to add like her like pants or tops or anything like that aren't you just God's favorite (laughs) 
Oh, I just have to go back to that. That is like bothering me so much. I have Ooh. the ideal bonding type. Like, all right, whatever. Who gives and shit? I just have the ideal shopping addiction that I buy enough fabric. So if I mess up, I'll be all right. Bloop. Speaking of fabric, your girl went through and organized all of my fabric that's in my garage. Now that's a big thing. Look at you. It, it is a big thing. Um, we're gonna take a pause so that you guys can clap for me because I don't I don't want you all to miss anything. So, um, I, you know how like people will be like, oh my God, do you want a cookie? I do. I like chocolate chip. I like, uh, Tate's specifically. So yes, I will take my cookie. Thank you. I think um, we just thought a cookie fun or, but also Brooklyn brittle will probably work too. Oh my God. Yes. Cause you know, I love me some Brooklyn brittle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, uh, I'm really excited about that because I feel like in fact, I was talking to Denver about this. I was like, it's, I really do need to organize this because I keep buying fabrics because I don't think that I have them. And so um, that is something that I know that I needed. And honestly, it took, um, it took an, it was an all day type of thing, but I had help from my husband and my daughter who was playing hooky from school. And I feel like that was um, something that was, Dare I say a family project? No, but really, I think it was really helpful because like my husband, not saying that he doesn't know the difference between fabrics, but if I say to him, because of course he's also my best friend, but he does not sew. If I say to him, oh, I need like a large cut of white white fabric, at least he can say, oh yeah, I remember folding that up and we put it in a bin. You know what I mean? Um, But I went through and I organized my fabrics by, of course, fabric content, either stretch or woven broke it down from there. I've got like bins that are full of sweater knit, French terry. Then I broke down like my four-way stretch knits by like rib knit versus double brush poly versus rayon versus I did it. I am so proud of myself and I'm very excited because now it, it frees me up mentally and emotionally to do projects, you know? And I love that. And that is good, good for you to have done you can do a lot of stuff with it and really be able to see stuff Mm -hmm. i do have an organization project that's going to be coming because i've decided that i do want to have a like a little a sewing station upstairs in Mm -hmm. my house or only have to go to the basement um and keep something going so um did that mean that i had to buy a new machine it didn't but i did Mm. um and with that machine came embroidery threads oh um different softwares and embroidery designs it came about 20 mm, no about 10 to 15 different quilting rulers wow Uh, this order came in three boxes what one box was 27 uh 27 pounds one was 15 pounds one was 50 okay but what machine did you get i'll talk about that later oh um, it's a used machine and I, 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 I don't have this bread and I want to try it. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. So literally it basically came with this own, oh, and I forgot the stabilizer, the rolls in a oh, row wow. of fusible, of tearaway, of heat bond, of toppers. Mm. Like, I think it came like, like 10 to 15 different rolls. Not gonna lie, that there has me jealous because, and the, it's not like the cheap stuff. It's like Floriani and stuff like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, I I have some organizing organizing to do of where I'm putting this. Do I know where I'm putting this? No, but and also right now we just as as she keeps on saying I'm rubbing my chest because I I got my sewing tattoo, and I'm uh, like I was about to tell you stop scratching because I see you. I'm not scratching because to... no, I'm scratching like my middle of my chest itches. Oh, okay. And it's not over here. And over here, this is why I'm rubbing. Got it. And, okay. But it, it has been washed. There's aquaphor. I'm putting the stuff on it. I need to put on it. Oh, but this is the part I forgot about because it had been so long. Yeah. Oh, child of God. You know, um, after having the mastectomy, I had, even though I did do a free nipple graft, and so I did have my nipples post mastectomy and reconstruction, mm-hmm. I did still go and um, I actually met someone who was going through a program here in Atlanta for the, what's technically considered um, areola repigmentation. All it is, is just tattooing your nipples, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, but their tattoo guns, way nice, super posh. And I have no feeling, so I couldn't feel anything. But um, I have no feeling, so I couldn't feel anything, including the healing process, which I'm very grateful for because like you, I cannot stand that healing process. It is just not my favorite. I was like, my God, like it literally, it just makes, it makes it feel like my whole chest is itching. Yeah. And, and then and you got to do the little, the little tap taps, because I think that on this, on my sewing, my sewing scissors, my shears, that's on my forearm. I think I did do some, some scratching, which caused some pigmentation to kind of, uh, get messed up. Yeah. You can only see it in my like watercolor splotches, which look actually terrible anyway. So gonna have to have that tattooed over but um yeah so i feel you very relatable content right here so yes yeah, so everybody so um this is my first tattoo in about 13 years wow 13 years 13 years yeah julian you didn't tell me that oh, yeah, the goodness. last time i got a tattoo i was training for a job at um an insurance company and they had us training in florida for two weeks Wow. And um, I got bored in class one day, designed the tattoo, and went and got it done the night, that night. Um, yeah. So, um, first time in a long time to get back into tattooing. I got a machine in the word create. Um, it is a machine I own as one of my vintage ones, um, which is super exciting. And now I'm already thinking about the next machine I want to get tattooed on me for my collection. Um. Wow. I would like to I want to get the same one that you did because I do want to match I do want a twin mm -hmm. in a completely different space though and obviously it'll probably look pretty different because of who I am as a designer <laughs> um but I'm like I like that um and honestly I like to have tattoos that match with certain people in my life um for for various reasons like when I went to New Orleans um the made for mermaids team we got our this the shears together mm. as like a team it was not team building it was definitely hey i want to go get a tattoo and then people were like yeah i'd like to get one too so i think three or four of us we all got them done mm -hmm. um this guy did not know how to do the watercolor tattoo so i'm definitely sitting here looking at my forearm a little unhappy but it's okay um you know it's fine it's it's gonna be all right, and plus you you have people that you know could fix it. It's so. very true. I can't. I do. I do. I do have people that can do that. Um, very very excited because my newest pattern has dropped. Yes, the primrose puffy sweatshirt. Love it. And this was the test that I want to say took me out, and it's not because of the testers, but it's because I ran the test during October. And again, October for me was a really um, unexpectedly, or I, I don't want to even say unexpectedly, but I didn't prepare for the emotions that were going to come and affect me in both, like both emotionally as well as mentally. Um, it being my first, um, my first like breast cancer awareness month as a pre-viver, right? I didn't think it was going to affect me or anything like that, but it did. And I was in a tough headspace. Um, and heart space all month. So because I was already feeling so raw um, and I had these emotions, you know, it was like one of those things that everything that the tester said felt like it was a personal attack to me when it wasn't, you know what I mean? So finally getting this kind of like launched and out there, I was really excited, but I was also really excited because it's hoodie season. It's Your perfect. girl loves a hoodie. Yeah. And I love cute. a hoodie. You can Thank dress you. it up or down, um, especially like I'm ready to see it in like some pretty stretch velvets and stuff like Ooh. that. Long maxi skirt with a slit. Like you have a whole outfit going. Yeah. For the yeah. holiday season. I agree because I do think that, you know, depending upon what your fabric choice is, you can do a lot of fun things with it because you can color block. You know, I'm not anti-color block. I'm, you know, we're getting mm -hmm. there. But um, awesome. actually on the cover, Rachel, um, someone who I sew with, her color blocking was so good. I love the way that she, and she always does color blocking. I swear she's like a color blocking master. 
but I loved the colors that she chose. I felt like it was so fall, right? Like it was so earthy, so fall. Um, and I love the puff sleeves. I was so geeked about that because like, I do love a dramatic sleeve. I love to give it a little bit of an entrance, you know, a little bit of a, oh, what's your sleeve doing? You know what I mean? A little bit of extra body. So if you all are looking for a new pattern to, of course, sew up for a new pattern November, definitely highly suggest and recommend the Primrose. And you can pair it very nicely with the Winnie um, or with another pattern that is actually in testing right now that I do think that will be out before November ends um, because we're giving upscale loungewear. Now that like you've said this whole, um, you know, velour velvet situation, now I'm like, mm, I feel like these these pants need to be made out of that and maybe I'll like them even more. Right. I'm excited. Exactly. Exactly. Also, so, pink tucks yeah. are everything. They are. They are. And then you can then you can twin with your hubby. I can twin with my hubby. And you know, and even make it for the whole family. Y'all can all come out just pin pin tucking. We can. I love it. I love it. Julian, don't tell me what a good time. A look. Look. Oh, but how about I wonder if I can figure out how to pin tuck those side the princess seams on the primrose and still be able to keep the invisible pocket. I think if I do that, then maybe I can pin tuck it and then um have it come down into a zipper pocket opening. If you don't pin tuck it, at least pins you can put um piping in it. That's another Ooh, option. Too. Piping in it. You see, yeah. this is again my favorite thing as a designer is seeing other people's thoughts and other people's design aesthetic come through because to me I'm just like mm, this is good I love that I love it and especially if you have the one of the um piping feet for your um for your surgery I do not. <laughs> well everybody else look I understand that you got so many different options for your feet for your different machines um you do. Like your 1034d um your regular brother mm -hmm. um there are feet options that you can do so doing like some it's adding like uh, um piping or stuff like that with your surgery is possible mm -hmm. um you can even do like pin tucks and stuff like that if you have the machine you can do it um and it's basically just using the foot with a, like a rolled hem that's an option mm -hmm. so even on like those winnies let's say that you wanted to do your pin tuck that stripe down the front and a like a contrasting color let's say that you're doing like Ooh. a velvet and you wanted to do like a neon green but it had that in a woolly nylon going down the front that's an option i just found this green pin tuck when i was doing our the jacket mm -hmm. and now i'm like julian my that's goodness it. i'm trying there are so many different options if you know how to fully use your machine i'm really excited um i teach at my local store and i submitted stuff for my next class i am doing one of uh suki so's one of her patterns on the serger and cover stitch i'm doing a crossbody bag that will be done on the serger so oh uh, that's exciting really excited to do that pattern um next next quarter speaking of serger and techniques what is your favorite slept on serger technique Favorite, and this is for sur surgery, not cover stitch. Mm -hmm. right? Surgery. Um, there's so many different hemming options that people don't fully utilize on just your surgery that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, I you think that. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the like the faux band that I normally do for a lot of my t-shirts and stuff like that is probably my favorite that I do. Um, and that's probably one of my favorite techniques, but also. Um, some of the flat lock stitches that you can do mm -hmm. on a um, machine, but also even your blind hem um, for certain fabrics is really nice. So a lot of your yeah. hemming techniques. If you want to see how those, some of those are done, um, if you go on YouTube, you can find me doing it with Surger School um, with So Daily on um, YouTube. So just check up Surger School. You'll see me in Rainbow. You can't miss me. Yes. Okay. I'll make sure that we link that in our show notes as well so that you guys can go and check that out. 
Um, and with that, we are going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. I, we hope that you um, bring positivity into the world and mm -hmm. be creative and find some time to sew this week. So until next time, y'all.